blessed in a major way. Yes. We're here tonight. And God's doing something so, so awesome in us, but we got to understand this, that I, I just want to just for a few moments just encourage somebody because it, it's kind of like a setup because God's ways are higher than our ways. And for all of us here today, God wants to do something brand new even in us beyond what we could even imagine. Beyond what we could think, ask, or even imagine. God has things for us. A lot of us, we like, we know about God's anointing, but God's saying, I want to even take you further than that. I want to show you my glory. Yeah. We're catching on. We're starting to team up with God because we say, God, you want to do something greater than Denver. God, this thing's bigger than us. God, you didn't just take me out of drugs just for me, God. God, you didn't just save me just to have a job and have a family and just do my thing. God, you saved me for a purpose, for a reason. God, it's bigger than me. God, what is it? And God began to show us that I have people for you. I have people on the other side of your obedience. I have people that you're sowing, and God, they're gonna they're gonna be saved because of you. For a few moments, we're getting ready to count down, but I just want to share something tonight with you. If you could, in the book of John, chapter 2, verse 1, and you may be seated this evening. I thank God for saving me. Thank God that we're all here, treasures out of darkness. Amen. I thank God for Pastor Sunday, Sister Judy. Amen. Thank God for Pastor Tom, Sister Jody. You know we're part of a powerful region. I thank God for Pastor John and Sister Rosina. Without them, we wouldn't be here. The faithfulness, just the call, just not them, but they were faithful to the call in their life. And now we know if God did it for them, he can do it for us. Praise the Lord. And we're in this, not even here tonight in the church, but we're family tonight. Praise the Lord. The book of John chapter 2, verse 1. How many know there was a wedding? If you could have seen the rest of the slideshow, you would have seen some weddings. Hello, somebody. Not just the ones they recorded. Hello. Maybe you could have on, but it was it was a good some weddings there. But here's a wedding in the book of John, chapter two, and it was on the third day. A wedding took place. Jesus' mother didn't say her name, but Jesus' mother, Jesus, and his disciples were invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, someone say when the wine was gone. Jesus' mother said to him, "They have no more wine." I mean, it wasn't even her party. Wasn't even her business. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Some of you know how to date in two places. You're not supposed to be, but you're just in there. Even Jesus said, Jesus said right here, woman, why do you involve me? It's not my problem. It ain't our party. It ain't our house. It ain't our wedding. What? It's none of our business. said to him, they didn't even mind what he said, but said, call the servants. He called the servants, do whatever he says. There were six stone water jars, 20 to 30 gallons, six of them. So Jesus said, fill the jars with water. Someone say, fill the jars with water. The jars with so water. they filled them to the brim. And he told them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. And they did so. And the master of the banquet takes the water and that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it come from, from the ser but the servants knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, everyone brings out the choice wine first, 
and get you cheaper wine. Should we say cheaper wine? After the guests have had too much to drink. But you have seen the best until now. You have seen the best until now. I want to talk to someone tonight because I don't know what you've been going through, and I don't know what your, your situation has been through, and I don't know all your circumstances, but I know this, that, that, that God works in ways that we don't work. When we're dealing with men, how do you know men will rip you off? Men will mislead you. Men could have their way with you. But guess what? God is not like that. God's ways are higher than our ways. And if you're in the house of God tonight, you're setting yourself up for a good year. And just like in the story, the best is yet to come. God has good things for us this year. I'll say it again. God has good things for us this year. God has good things for you this year. He wants to bless you. He wants to fill you. He wants to do something, a miracle in your life. I don't know if you know, but God still does miracles. When the Pharisees, the church people, came to Jesus... He, they said, Jesus, how can the disciples go fast? <coughs> Jesus said, you don't get it. They don't fast because they're with me. He said, they're with me. They don't need to fast. You don't understand. You don't get it. You don't get what I'm, I'm trying to do here. He said, do you take a, a garments that's been torn? Do you put a... a an uh, unstruck in peace on that and make the patch no. And then he said this, you put old wine in new wine skins? No, you don't put new wine in old wine skins. Why? Because when it expands, the, the skins will burst. You have to put new wine into new wine skins. Hello, somebody. Some, maybe along the journey of 2016, maybe some things happen. Maybe you're even coming to the house of God. And maybe even the church person, you don't understand what God's doing or wants to do in your life. I mean, you know, if we're going to be a greater Denver, a greater church, if we're going to go to the next level, I mean, you know, the new thing God wants to do, we have to team up with God. We have, we, you have to team up with God. He can't put the new thing he wants to do in our old mentality. We can't do things the way we always did, the old way, when God wants to do something new. I, I spent some time with Pastor, and he was talking about Talk about foreigners. They don't have the limitations or the fear that we have. The old wine skin. When there's an opportunity, they're able to take the opportunity because it's never been presented before and they could go all the way with it. But how many know when um, some of us, because of our past, we, we sometimes limit ourselves and we're not able to see the fullness of what God wants to do because we're held back because of things that happened to us in the past. But Jesus said, you know what? Behold, be in me. St. Corinthians talks about this tonight. You might be in the house of the Lord tonight. You're in the house of the Lord tonight for a reason. But you might be here, and it could happen. You could be here. You might even be in the men's home. And you don't even know Jesus Christ. You could be here tonight, and you might not even be saved. You don't know what that means. You might not be born again. You might be religious. You might even pray, but you might not be born again. You might know about God and even say, oh, I, I like that, whatever. But you might not be filled with his spirit. Just because you're in the garage don't make you a car. And there's people just because you're in church don't make you a Christian. How do you become a Christian? 
How do you be saved? How do you go to heaven? Is it because you go to church? Is it because you came to New Year's night at the church house? Is it because you were good? You gave your money. You did good things. You were a good person. It's only the blood of Jesus Christ that we shed. And his blood covered your sins. His blood covered your sins. He said, even though they're the most terrible sins, I'm going to cover them. They're like scarlet, but I'm making white as snow. I'm going to wipe your slate clean. And there's someone here tonight, guess what? You can come in this place and say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. And he can wash you white as clean. White, white as snow, wash your sins away. Christian, there's some Christian here, you've been struggling with guilt and shame. Condemnation. I mean, no, that's not God. And you can leave the house tonight and you can come and say, God, forgive me my sin. The Bible says if you confess your sins, it's faithful to forgive you and wash you clean. And you can start 2017 a brand new, clean person. Why? Because of what you didn't know. You never could do good enough. Your best day is not good enough. Your best day is get that out of here. It's not all that. It's the blood of Jesus. Amen. The blood of Jesus is what, the only way to heaven. Amen. The blood of Jesus is the only way to get before the Father and say, God, and begin to pray. The only way you can get there is through the blood of Jesus. And his mercies are new every day. The, the new year don't change you. This new year don't change you. There's people on the couch. The new year's going to come. It's not that. It's, it's, a, it's when you embrace and say, I want something new to happen in my life. And through Jesus Christ, the power of God can happen in your life. Some people say, oh, you went with Jesus. You needed a crutch. No, I went with Jesus. I need a solid foundation. I did not just need a crutch. I need a crutch if I have a doobie. <laughs> Jesus is not my crutch. Jesus is my solid foundation. Because without him, I was sinking in the sand. I was, I was tore up. I was messed up. I was lost. Hello, somebody. There might be someone here tonight. You're lost. Without Jesus Christ, you are lost. Without Jesus Christ, you are hurting. You are empty. There's a hole in your heart that you're trying to fill, but you can't be filled. Only way you can be filled with Jesus Christ. <coughs> the love and the mercy of God. And how many know many of us, that's the best thing that ever happened in our lives. <laughs> the best thing that ever happened the day that we got saved, when we found Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Some of you were struggling with the home. Some of you are struggling in church. Now to end the struggle, if you lift your hands and just surrender. God, I'm tired of running. I'm tired of trying to figure it out. I'm tired, tired of trying to put the pieces together. I give you my life. I'm falling to the arms of God. Praise the Lord. I'm laboring tonight a little bit because there's somebody I just want to really talk to you. God loves you so much. And tonight's a special night for you. Because God wants to do something in your life this year, this next year, that you could never, ever imagine. Sister Danny testified. But sister, that ain't even nothing what God wants to do. Some of you stay faithful because God is going to blow your mind this next year. Gonna blow your mind. Hello? Am I trying to say that it's going to be a perfect year? No, it's going to be a crazy year, yes. But you're going to find that every setback is not a setback, it's a setup. You're going to find that God's going to position you. He's going to be faithful and He's going to continue to just 
pull you through. His grace is sufficient, and, and you're going to see that God's going to take us to a whole other level. You believe that? And to God be the glory. If you read the rest of that whole thing, oh, I was charged. I can't even communicate. Like, ah, oh. oh, it was hitting me. Like, oh. God was showing his glory. The decision to end right there. But God was showing his glory. And Victory Hours Greater Denver, God wants to bring his glory. God, people are going to trip out. Like, what? What's going on? Oh, my goodness. God is on the move in Victory Outreach Greater Denver. Praise the Lord. Whatever you came in last year, maybe ministry even, there's people in church ministry, you're bitter. You know what bitter means? It means that something bit her. <laughs> you're laughing, but I'm serious. If you study snake bites, most people don't even know they were bitten. They begin to experience the symptoms. And if you're snake bitten, the Bible says, not the Bible, but they say to stop it from getting to your heart. How many know ministry and people and things in life, things happen to you? We can't let them get to our heart. And Moses said that people got snake bitten. They had to look to Jesus and they were healed. Tonight, I want to just take a moment. We could all stand. If you're bitter, if you're going through things, if your heart's heavy, if you're here, man, I'm, I'm begging you, please. If you're here tonight, you're not saved. You're not saved. Come on, I'm begging you tonight. I, I, I'm begging you tonight. Please listen. Give your life to God. If you're fighting with God tonight, I'm begging you, please, surrender to God. Please, let God do what he wants to do in your life. Please give in to God. He loves you. He won't hurt you. He understands. Please, for a moment, if you're a Christian and you carry pain, you carry hurt, I'm asking you tonight to please give it to God because he can carry it like you can't carry it. A lot of things you've been going through, addictions, these things that's been happening, these things that you struggle with, a lot of those things ain't even your problem. Those are symptoms of your problem. But God knows your problem and he loves you and he can heal you and he can help you tonight. All we got to do is cry out to God. All we got to do is ask God. Believe in God. Confess with your mouth and you'll be saved. Confess your sins to God and he'll forgive you. He's faithful. He loves you. His mercy is new every day. Every day his mercy is new. Thank you, Father, for your power tonight. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, we want to come before you tonight. Open, God, transparent, God, ready, God, for what you have in our life. Many, God, are struggling with themselves, with the world, with their problems, God. They're tired, God. I pray tonight, Lord, they surrender, you give them rest. Someone here tonight struggling with you and religion and, and uh, trying to put the pieces together. Show yourself to tonight that you're not a religion, but that you love him, Lord. You're a person. You're real. You're real, God. And that you can save him. You can love him, God. I pray that person open their heart tonight. Don't let them be so smart, God, that they miss you. Don't let them be so together and sophisticated that they miss the simple message of your love of the cross that you died for them. Come on, every head bowed, every eye closed. If you're here tonight and you're not saved, if you're not serving God, you don't know Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is not God of your life.
Jesus Christ did not sit on the throne of your heart, that's you tonight. Tonight, I, I ask you to pray with me tonight all over this place. Jesus, come into my heart. Wash away my sins. And let me be born again, like your Bible says. That you love me. That you died for me. So that I could go to heaven and have eternal life. And today, Jesus, I give you my life. I ask you to be the God of my heart. And I'll serve you from this day forward by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Just a moment, let him wash away all that sin, all that guilt. Let him come in, talk to you, let him move in your life. Christian, you fall short, you fail from God, you're not as committed as you used to be. Maybe you backslid. I know a lot of the things we do, we do like when people see us, but sometimes behind the, just you, us and God, we know we're not all that, all there. And we want to re recommit our lives. So pray with me, Jesus. My life is not my own. I've been bought with a price. Sometimes I forget that and I live for myself. But tonight, this new year, I want to rededicate my life back to you. <coughs> Forgive me my sins. Let me serve you this year better than I ever have before. By your grace, by your grace.